Hey, this is Sasha Evdikov, and thanks for joining me for another episode on Backstage Income, where we like to go in and bring you back behind the scenes to show you how to create a profitable business. Now, in today's episode, we're going to take a look at how to create an awesome podcast cover art piece in Photoshop. So if you're just listening to us on a podcast, be sure to take a look at the video on our YouTube channel. So what we're going to do is look at creating this piece of artwork here that I have and I'll show you how I kind of came up with this. And it's basically using the principles and concepts that we've talked in the previous episode of what makes a great podcasting cover for your show. So here, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how I came up with this. It's not a very difficult process. There's a few revisions that I went through, but overall, I'm going to go through in Photoshop to show you how you can create this on your own or something very similar. So let's uh, go ahead and open up our canvas first. And uh, in order for us to create a piece of art for your podcast, the minimum size requirement is 1400 pixels by 1400 pixels. Um, of course, you want to go in and make sure it's RGB and 72 DPI on the resolution. If you want to go larger, you can, and the maximum is 3,000. And we're going to start with 3,000 because, um, you know, it's good for featured uh, images. And also, if you reduce the size later in the future, it actually uh, holds up better than trying to scale things up. So we'll go ahead and press OK. Uh, that'll open up a new canvas here for us. And typically the way I start things out is I kind of put the background and the text on top very quickly so that way I know exactly hey, where are things positioned. And the way that I do this is I'll go ahead and start creating some new layers and I kind of start creating a few tones. So I might do like a, a dark tone and start filling it with a certain color and then I'll go ahead and pop my text on here and I already know what the show name is going to be. So it's going to be called Hungry for Returns. And I typically split up uh, the letters uh, or, or the words, each one, because when you do that, you're able to modify and manipulate things a lot easier. So I'll just go ahead and type each one on a new line. And you can already see here how it's starting to become uh, created. So as we start scaling this and uh, concoctioning our creation, um, you can start playing and manipulating the fonts and uh, where you want the position of things. And already you'll see that, you know, as I start playing with this, you, you can really modify it depending on your needs. I could go ahead and kind of create it like this and structure it where all the writing is kind of to the right. Unfortunately, for reading purposes, this is not always the best. I could go ahead and structure it a little to the left. Um, I could do the alignment for that. I could also rotate one of these, uh, like let's say hungry, and make it quite large and put it over here on the side. Sometimes that's also uh, an interesting way or perspective of doing things. Uh, but again, you don't want to overcomplicate the reader's eyes as you do this. Um, so sometimes it'll work depending on what other elements you have. But, uh, you know, a lot of times I like to keep my reading very simple and make sure that people can read things without stressing about them. Because the more that they stress their eyes and strain their eyes, uh, the more difficult it becomes. And sometimes they may not even listen or watch your show uh, because they've had that initial strain. So I have kind of a, a basic setup here. Uh, sometimes what you can do is also tilt things. So as you go ahead and tilt things, you can now start playing with this concept. So let's say we go ahead and draw a couple of rectangles here, or just kind of a diagonal rectangle. I could go ahead and start overlaying a little color. So you might play with certain colors, like let's say a green here. And this already is starting to create kind of a nice, simple uh, design. And if we do the blending options, uh, you don't want to overuse your effects, but let's say you go ahead and adjust some colors. Now you can go ahead and, and play with some color tones. So you might play with a green here. You could play with kind of a, a blue here, a purple, um, and go with kind of a different background and see what is it that you like, what stands out to you. Um, you know, maybe if you had a more female audience, you could go with kind of a pinker tone or 
you know, more neon-y colors because that's maybe more attractive to your audience. Uh, in this case, I'll leave it like this for now. We have a pink tone here with white um, writing and kind of a dark background there. And now what I'll do is start creating some other elements. Of course, we can go back and change these things. Now, for me, the way I pop in my elements is I have a lot of assets that I pre-created. And for me, I actually have face shots that I've created. And I, every year or two, I'll go ahead and take more face shots. And what I do is I do kind of a green screen effect and I create a lot of them. And then I actually pre-edit them as well to use in thumbnails. So that way I don't have to pose for my thumbnails. Uh, they're already pre-done. But what I want to do is find one that works uh, an image here. And I'll move this to another monitor, which I already know which image I want. And uh, let me just go ahead and find it here. And once we find that image, we'll go ahead and just kind of uh, drop it in there. So it's just going to be uh, this image right here. So let me put it in. It's a little bit larger. And now because I went ahead and did uh, or inputted one that's a um, uh, little bit has that green screen behind it, I do have to clean it up. Uh, because the other ones that I have cleaned up are specific for YouTube thumbnails. So this one is a little more uh, higher resolution. So I did upscale it a little bit, but um, that shouldn't hurt it too bad. So I'll go ahead and use the magic wand a little bit to select some of these green areas and then hold the shift key to select a few more. Go ahead and make sure these other little zones are selected as well. And then uh, under the arm also select it and then what we'll do is also select some of these uh, edges here because uh, you know the green screen didn't fit all the way through I wanted to make sure everything was captured uh, but in this case it, we had additional extras in the green screen so I'll go ahead and select these little clips and areas and then what I'll do is select inverse that'll get the opposite of that go ahead and hit the mask button and that'll create my um, my my graphic without the background and now I can upscale it a little more if I want and get it to a, a good position where I, I like it so here you can see just depending on the proportions of myself uh, the sizing doesn't work out very well as I start moving it behind the text um, you start to overlay those things now I, I kind of like the concept but you can see it's a little bit more uh, covering up a little bit more of the face and the neckline which um, kind of makes it look a little weird because it doesn't look a little human. So this is why I decided to actually go back and kind of rearrange some of these uh, things for for this writing and let me just hide these layers and I went in and kind of offset it a bit. So again let me just retype this out um, then we'll go ahead and duplicate the layer hungry for and then again one more returns so we'll go ahead now and have this set up and you can just check your alignment um, even if you use the Photoshop alignment tool sometimes with certain fonts they don't work so great but now I went ahead and have this concept where I have the letters kind of to the side of me or to the left and I do want this big enough because remember when the podcasting covers go out uh, they are a bit um, let's just say they're shrunk down so I want to also give myself on the writing a little bit of space so I could make it pretty big like this but what I wanted to do was shrink one of these a little bit and uh, I'll go ahead and shrink the size of hungry and you can also change the text of this and what I'll do is change the text here we have Museo Sans and I could just go to 500 and that's a little bit better because my main keyword here is returns so it's basically profits hungry for returns I could say hungry for profits if I decide to change it here in a little bit uh, but returns is uh, also a good good word to use so here we'll go ahead and adjust some of the uh, sizings for the letters here and for the fonts so again make a few adjustments and then we'll bring up returns if I want to change it to profits and see how that looks you know I could
go ahead and change that as well. But typically in investing, because this is an investing uh, podcast or a show, we're looking for returns. So you return on your money. I could say profit on your money, but profits, hungry for profits would be more for business. So in this case, we're looking at hungry for returns. Um, you know, and uh, I might leave it at this. You could sleep on it depending on how long you've been thinking about your show. And, you know, I just want to make sure things are in alignment here. And now what I'll do is go ahead and start creating kind of a couple of boxes. So I'll go ahead and create one box and then I'll start putting a little bit of a background behind it. It doesn't matter what the color is because we'll adjust it here later. And I'll go ahead and size it a little bit smaller because I want it contained in that range. Now here you kind of have a choice. Do you want it to be uh, very tight or do you want a little padding on the outside edges here? Uh, for me, I like a little bit of padding and room for the eyes to digest. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of padding and I'll go ahead and shrink this down just a little bit more to contain it there in my frame. And again, you can move it over using the arrow keys here and move it down or up. Go ahead and add, a, again, a little bit more to it on the top for our background. And now we kind of have our uh, box. So now what I could do is go ahead and duplicate this box, start moving it up, and uh, go ahead and reduce it for the four words and, and type. And I'll go ahead and kind of get it closer there because what I want to do is actually start uh, moving it down a bit and get the four a little tighter because remember when we did it without uh, these boxes the regular way it was a bit spaced out too far and covered up a, a bit too much of the the picture or image so again we'll do that we'll move the hungry also a bit lower and I'll go ahead and duplicate again the next one and move that up as well and then I'll just go ahead and increase it here on the hungry and now you kind of have that uh, design right there so you can see I have hungry for returns so, uh, one main piece is missing is of course the background here um, and the icon so I'll go ahead and move the uh, face a little down to align it resize it a little bit larger here just to contain the frame and I want a little more space there for that graphic. I already have an arrow made in Illustrator. If, if you don't have one, you can just pull one uh, up from a website or an icon and uh, you know use one of those. So here we have kind of an arrow that makes sense for the podcast. Go ahead and change the blending option for that. We'll do a color overlay and I'll use the green for the time being so you can see. And now I kind of have that set up where it looks fairly nice uh, for the for the podcast or for the for the design uh, a couple other things that you could do is the background the background looks a little plain right now so uh, what you want to do is instead of this background one of the things I like to do is you could do kind of a gradient so let's just say you have one that's a little bit darker and the other one let's just say we have the same thing but I'll go a little more kind of gray or lighter and then we'll do a little gradient effect on it and we'll swap these colors actually. And now you can see you have a little bit more of a, um, I guess you could say more of a dynamic view you know, to, the, uh, to the cover. It gives it a little bit of, of depth. If you don't like that way, what you could do is just take a big brush, um, take a circle right here, create a new, new layer kind of and just pop a brush but just make sure that that brush hardness is zero so now you have kind of a little bit of a, a background containment there right there and you can of course reduce that uh, opacity on that brush and that gives you a little more control and flexibility so you can see that's one way to go about it uh, the other thing that you could do is of course find a little bit of a, a background picture so uh, let's say you go to uh, Pixabay over here and what you could do is search for like a wooden table 
uh, background and you could find one of these wooden tables here to use and let's just say we go ahead and uh, pick one that doesn't have a lot of objects on it let's just say this one right here I'll do a download I'll try to get the biggest size possible and then what we want to do is uh, go ahead and drag this in there. So I'm just going to drag this in here be behind me and we'll have to size it up. Of course you're reducing your quality a bit when you do this uh, but for our purposes it's going to be good enough. Um, I'll go ahead and now what I can do is change the opacity a bit and now that gives you a little more depth as you can see. So it's not a strong wooden table like that. Uh, but as I reduce kind of the opacity, you could see right there um, how it just gives it a little bit more depth. And now what you can do is, let's just say you wanted to play with some of these colors. So one option is to put all these uh, colored items in a folder. And now what you can do is change the color um, color overlay. And I could say, okay, well, let's go blue or cyan and see how that looks. So you can start playing with this and then as you look at them you can decide hey well I like this one, I don't like that one um, and see what catches your eye, what catches your attention and that kind of creates a nice little um, podcast uh, cover. So you can see really between the one that I had initially I may actually end up changing things around because looking at both of these here let me just show you. You can see they're both quite nice and it's really just a matter of which one you like better. Of course with going with a lighter color on the background you'll need to go with a little bit of a darker tone but over, overall um, you can see how uh, both of these will do just fine. Uh, one of the things I don't like to do is to create fancy fonts so I always keep things simple and I'll just change the weight of those fonts and you can see how that plays out really well here in our situation. Of course, if you go ahead and change the text from returns to profits, which you could of course do, and maybe it doesn't take up enough uh, space, you could go ahead and stretch the letter area right there. And that can give you a little bit more uh, room to, uh, to really uh, uh, fill that space and of course make a few little adjustments there as well. But you can see here how we've created a really nice piece that works well for you know a lot of different podcast variations that really we're not overusing things, not making things complicated, just keeping it simple and create a nice simple design. Now, if you want to learn more about what type of tips and ways to create your podcast cover art uh, works best, then uh, take a look at the earlier episode because uh, that's where we cover some of these uh, things in more detail. Overall, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. If you want to go ahead and subscribe to our newsletter list where you get to see some other good stuff that we have coming out along with other great business tips, insights, and videos, uh, then go ahead and click the link right over here. If you want to just join us on YouTube, then uh, click the uh, link right here on my face and you can subscribe to our channel and see other great videos coming up. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.